Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Survey Coordinator Chad Parent. Chad, hunting seasons are just wrapping up. Why do we survey hunters? So the Game and Fish manages deer at the level of a hunting unit. And within a hunting unit, there are a bunch of different factors that can potentially make that deer population go up or down. And so primarily we think about this in terms of the availability and the amount of habitat, maybe weather during key parts of reproduction, maybe it's disease on the landscape. On the other side of that, we've also got to balance, you know, those things with uh, the people that are living in those hunting units. You know, we may have people that want a large deer population. We may have people that uh, um, have less of a tolerance for, you know, um, of those larger deer populations. So we're balancing these kind of these natural uh, survival and mortality factors. We're balancing social carrying capacity. And the lever that we use to do that is hunter harvest. And so if we're going to pull that lever to make populations go up or down, uh, to, you know, we need to have some good information on that. And that's where surveys come in. What are surveys typically sent out? We try and time the survey to arrive right as the season is closing. And so as we come up on the end of the year, we're, uh, we're gonna be sending out the small game survey. So that's going to include all of our upland, our, uh, you know, our squirrels, uh, as well as our waterfowl, so ducks and geese. Uh, along with that, the swan season is closing at the end of the year. So that survey will be going out. Uh, and then the deer bow season will wrap up as well. And as we you know, kind of progress uh, into you know, mid-May, we'll be sending out the fur bearer survey as well. With all that being said, Chad, what kind of information are we collecting from hunters with all these hunting activities? Well, there are a couple of key pieces of information that we really care about. And first and foremost is we want to know if you hunted. And if you didn't, we still want your survey back. If you did hunt, we want to know where'd you go, how hard did you hunt in those places, and were you successful? Okay, and the big question is, what does Game and Fish do with all this data? In the short term, we're turning those uh, survey data that come back from hunters and we're producing a, a harvest estimate from that information. That harvest information we pass on to our biologists and they will assemble that with all of the other information that they're collecting on the species and the resource. And they're going to take that harvest information and turn it into a decision. How, you know, what do we do? Where do we spread harvest out? Can we increase harvest in the upcoming year? But over the long term, each year of information we collect is just continually going into this massive database on hunter harvest. So take our deer gun survey, for example. We've been collecting those data for almost 50 years now. And what we can do with that information is kind of pitch it into a, a big data framework and we can use that, that large data set to ask some really interesting questions way more efficiently. Give me an example of this massive data or this big data. With, with our standard hunter harvest data that we collect really easily, we'll be able to recreate a, a population estimate uh, a measure of survival and a measure of productivity for any hunting unit that we've ever collected information on in the last 50 years, for every single year that we've collected those data. We're going from an estimate of harvest from the three core pieces of information that we collect, and we're turning that into a population estimate. I mean, it's something that we would never have been able to do 10 years ago, and our agency will be able to tackle some of those things in the next couple of years. Okay, let's move on with technology. Chad, how is Game of Fish using technology with our survey stuff? We, we see, we hear, and we feel the need to expand the opportunities to complete some of our surveys online, and we're exploring how to do that. You know, the interesting thing is, is that we've been sending out the survey, a traditional paper survey through the mail, for almost 50 years now, and it works really well. And so we're not in a rush to introduce a new way of taking a survey because we have this protocol that's worked so well. And so to future-proof the next 50 years of uh, survey protocols, we want to study this, and we want to make sure that, you know, we're not rolling out something that is kind of full of bugs and is not going to work for our hunters. And so what we're doing to ensure that protocol will remain the one we use for the long term is we're working with uh, University of North Dakota to explore some of these, uh, these different ways of sending out a survey over the internet. Preliminary results suggest that yeah, internet surveys are going to be a fixture for a long time. Okay, and by doing that we're sending out electronic surveys for our moose and elk seasons? 
Yeah, actually, that was kind of a precursor. We're uh, like that's outside of the study with uh, University of North Dakota, um, but it's uh, like our biologists were happy enough to give it some pilot testing, and it has worked really well. Uh, you know, some of the response rates that we get from the internet survey, at least for the moose, in the first couple of years have been, uh, you know right around 75 percent in the first couple of days and like, we would have had to have waited a month before we saw response rates for like uh, like that for our traditional paper survey. Sure and with the elk seasons closing at the end of December and the new proclamation for the next year typically starts in mid-February you pretty much have instant results from from these online yeah. surveys. Yeah good point we uh, so our elk season closes at the end of the year we try and time our surveys to arrive at the end of the year it takes a month minimum to get good information back and then we also want to send a follow-up which is another month minimum so we're at the end of February by the time we're trying to get some of these surveys summarized and reported so our biologists have good information to inform the proclamations. Any drawbacks to electronic surveys? You know from a dollars and cents standpoint not really <laughs> they're just they're just cheaper hands down and uh, if, if they work just as well then you know it's win-win but traditionally, the research suggests that they don't work just as well for some hunters. A decade ago, you know, not everybody had a valid email address. And so I think a lot of the barriers that were there 10 years ago are sort of disappearing. And there's actually evidence of that from some of our initial two years of data that we've collected through UND. So if you just look at the information that we've collected so far, and you pare it down into people that are older than 65 and people that are younger than 65. The, the, the older age group actually returns internet surveys at a higher rate than the younger age group. Okay, not everybody gets a survey. Right, you have to be randomly selected, and so that's by design. Uh, we measure harvest in our state through an experimental design that the main assumption is that the people that respond to those surveys do so randomly, and that's can be different from other states, like we get a lot of hunters from Minnesota that will call in and they'll ask, hey, I'm just reporting the results of my harvest. And uh, we actually, you know, we don't have mandatory reporting in, in our state. And in fact, our surveys are not mandatory. They're completely voluntary. We, of course, appreciate when you fill them out, but the way we estimate harvest is through a, a probabilistic design to a random sample of hunters. Okay, and how long does it take to fill out these surveys? It, it takes minutes. We want to make these as easy as possible. We're not interested in a bunch of other information. We just want to know, you know, those three key things I mentioned earlier. And it is the hunter's responsibility. This is a huge piece of data that helps the game of fish out a lot when managing wildlife. Absolutely. You know, I look at it as it, it's just another part of being a good sportsman and a good conservationist. You know, we're all out there. We're closing gates. We're driving a few extra minutes down the road. If we see another hunter parked in our favorite hunting spot, we're not shooting the entire covey out of a spot. You know, returning your survey is an extension of that. It just takes a few minutes, just like all of the other things and activities we do to be good sportsmen. A lot of great information, Chad. Thank you. As Chad just mentioned, if you do receive a survey in the mail or electronically, take a few moments to fill out that survey as the information is very important to managing our state's wildlife. For survey coordinator Chad Parent and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.